Most people won't notice it at first. There won't be a dramatic announcement, no viral keynote, no sudden headline declaring that everything has changed. Instead, it will start quietly, almost invisibly, with a few engineers making a decision they didn't expect to make. A company that is always standardized on one Linux distribution will quietly pilot something else. A developer who swore they would never leave their current setup will install a different. ISO just attested, and somewhere in the background, usage numbers will start bending in a direction that, once you notice it, is impossible to ignore. By the time the wider tech world realizes what's happening, the switch will already be underway. Linux has always been about choice, but choice also creates inertia. People stick with what works. Enterprises don't migrate operating systems lightly. Governments don't retrain staff on a whim. Developers don't abandon familiar workflows unless the pain of staying becomes greater than the cost of leaving. That balance is what makes the idea of a next big Linux OS so interesting, because history shows that when the balance finally tips, it doesn't tip back. The distro that wins that moment doesn't just gain users, it reshapes expectations for what Linux is supposed to be. Right now, in late 2025, the Linux ecosystem looks stable on the surface. Ubuntu still dominates mindshare in enterprise and cloud. Debian remains the quiet backbone of countless systems. Fedora feeds innovation into the Red Hat ecosystem. Arch continues to influence power users and developers who want control above all else. Everything appears settled. But beneath that stability, there is a growing tension that didn't exist a few years ago, and it's being driven by forces that have very little to do with package managers or desktop themes. The first force is trust, and not the abstract philosophical kind. This is practical trust, the kind that determines whether a company is willing to bet millions of dollars on a platform. Over the past few years, Linux users have watched major vendors make decisions that prioritize business alignment over community expectations. Some of those decisions were understandable, others less so, but together they've created a subtle unease. It's not outrage, not rebellion, just a quiet sense that the ground rules are changing. When that happens, people don't immediately leave. They start looking around. At the same time, Linux is no longer competing only with Windows and Mac OS. It's competing with managed platforms, container-first workflows, immutable operating systems, and cloud-native abstractions that make the underlying OS almost invisible. For a new generation of engineers, the operating system isn't something you customize endlessly. It's something that should stay out of the way, update itself safely, and never surprise you at the wrong moment. That expectation is slowly colliding with traditional Linux assumptions. This collision is where the next big Linux OS begins to take shape. It isn't defined by being easy or lightweight or bleeding edge. Those labels have existed forever. What's emerging instead is a distro philosophy built around predictability without stagnation, security without friction, and flexibility without chaos. That combination sounds simple, but it's something Linux has historically struggled to deliver in a single coherent experience. If you look at enterprise environments right now, you'll notice a strange contradiction. On one hand, organizations want slower change. They want long support cycles, stable APIs, and minimal surprises. On the other hand, they're under pressure to adopt new technologies faster than ever. Containers, Kubernetes, AI workloads, confidential computing, zero trust security models, the traditional answer has been to freeze the base OS and move innovation into layers above it. That works, but it also creates complexity, and complexity is expensive. Developers feel this tension too, even if they describe it differently. They want modern tool chains, current kernels, and first-class support for new hardware. At the same time, they don't want their system breaking because a library updated at the wrong time. They want their laptop to behave like an appliance when they need reliability and like a playground when they need experimentation. Historically, Linux has forced users to pick one or the other. The distro that people will switch to in 2026 is the one that convincingly resolves this tension. Not by promising everything to everyone, but by redefining what the operating system's responsibility actually is. Instead of being a constantly mutable collection of packages, it becomes a stable platform that applications and workflows build upon in a more controlled way. Instead of updates being a source of anxiety, they become routine, reversible, and boring. Boring, in this context, is a compliment. This is where things start to get interesting. Because a few years ago, this kind of approach would have sounded niche, 
even experimental. Today, it's quietly becoming mainstream. Immutable or image-based operating systems, atomic updates, declarative system configuration, and container-native development are no longer fringe ideas. They're being used in production, at scale, by organizations that care deeply about uptime and security. What's different now is that these ideas are converging into something that feels ready for broad adoption. It's not just servers or specialized desktops, but everyday developer machines and enterprise workstations. The next big Linux OS isn't trying to replace everything you know. It's trying to remove entire categories of problems you've learned to live with. Think about how much mental energy Linux users spend managing their systems, tracking dependencies, resolving conflicts, worrying about whether an update will break something critical. This has always been framed as the price of freedom. But what if that trade-off is no longer necessary? What if you could have a system that is deeply customizable at the workflow level without being fragile at the system level? This is the question that has been quietly driving adoption of a new generation of Linux distributions, even if many users don't describe it that way. Instead of asking which packages do I install, the question becomes which environment do I want to run on top of a known good? Base, instead of tweaking the OS endlessly, users define their setup declaratively and let the system enforce consistency. At first, this feels restrictive. Long-time Linux users are understandably skeptical of anything that seems to limit direct control. But something unexpected happens once people spend enough time in this model. They realize that their actual freedom increases. Rolling back a failed update takes seconds. Reproducing the same environment across multiple machines becomes trivial. Onboarding new developers no longer involves a fragile checklist of manual steps. Enterprises notice something else. Support costs go down. Security posture improves. Compliance becomes easier to demonstrate. The OS stops being a constant variable and starts behaving like a dependable foundation. When that happens, decision makers start paying attention. Now here's where the open loop tightens. Several distributions are moving in this direction. But only one is positioned to benefit from a convergence of technical maturity, ecosystem support, and timing. It's not the newest distro, and it's not the one with the loudest marketing. In fact, many Linux users already interact with it indirectly, without thinking of it as a desktop OS at all. This distribution has spent years refining a model where the base system is effectively immutable. Updates are atomic, and applications are increasingly isolated from the OS itself. It has deep roots in enterprise Linux, but it's no longer confined to servers. Over the past few release cycles, it has quietly become more approachable for developers and even general users. Without abandoning its core principles, what makes it especially compelling for 2026 is not just the technology, but the ecosystem momentum around it. Major hardware vendors are beginning to support it explicitly. Container and orchestration tooling treats it as a first-class citizen. Security features that used to require complex configuration are now built in and enabled by default. And perhaps most importantly, the organization behind it has a clear incentive to keep it stable, predictable, and boring because their business depends on trust at scale. At the same time, the community variant of this OS has evolved rapidly. It's no longer just a proving ground for enterprise releases. It's a polished, daily drivable system that developers are increasingly choosing for their personal machines. It's not because they have to, but because it makes their work easier. This is the moment where historical patterns matter. In the past, Linux distros that achieved dominance didn't do so by being the most flexible or the most cutting edge. They won by becoming the default choice for a specific use case and then expanding outward. Ubuntu did this by making Linux approachable and predictable for a generation of users and organizations. Debian did it by becoming synonymous with stability and trust. The distro people will switch to in 2026 is following a similar path, but the use case is different. It's becoming the default choice for environments where reliability, security, and modern workflows intersect. Once it becomes the obvious answer for that category, adoption accelerates almost automatically. There's also a psychological factor at play. Right now, many Linux users feel caught between worlds. Traditional desktop distros feel increasingly fragile or opinionated in ways that don't align with modern workflows. At the same time, cloud-native systems feel too abstract or locked down for daily use. The distro that bridges this gap doesn't just offer features, it offers relief. 
relief from constant maintenance, from configuration drift, from the fear that a routine update will derail your workday. By the time people consciously realize they've switched, the decision often feels inevitable in hindsight. They didn't leave their old distro because it was bad. They left because something else finally felt better aligned with how they actually work in 2026. This is why the switch won't look like a mass exodus at first. It'll look like pilots, experiments, side projects, and secondary machines. Then it will show up in job postings. Then in default recommendations from internal IT teams. Then in vendor support matrices. And at that point, the question will no longer be whether this distro is the future, but why anyone waited so long. The most important insight, and the one worth delaying until now, is that the next big Linux OS isn't winning because it's more Linux than everything else. It's winning because it redefines what Linux needs to be in a world where stability and change are no longer opposites. It treats the operating system as infrastructure, not a hobby project. Without losing the openness that made Linux successful in the first place, in 2026, the distro everyone switches to won't feel revolutionary day to day. That's the point. It will feel calm, predictable, trustworthy, and in an industry defined by constant disruption, that kind of experience is quietly radical. When you step back and look at the trajectory, the signs are already there. The only question left is how quickly the rest of the ecosystem catches up to what's been unfolding in plain sight. And by the time that answer becomes obvious, the next big Linux OS will no longer be a prediction. It will just be the new normal.